Welcome to Radical Underdogs. Last time you saw this car being reshelled, it's had a race out of Brands Hatch. There are a few optional thing, bits and pieces to do. Well, one slightly less optional, I need to replace the brakes. Uh, but if you want to see your particular item of interest, it is all in the description below. Otherwise, let's get straight into it. Okay, the first thing we're going to do is change the brake discs and pads. They do get very beaten up on a race car. We're using Hawk DTC 30s uh, and EVC discs at the moment. So you can see here that when I took off the wheel, I noticed that the alignment bolts were massively out of whack. So anyway, regardless of which marking it is, it's miles out, which means the camber and the caster would have been massively off. So I can probably blame the, my spin on this. Uh, and that would explain why it felt very different from one lap to the next. I am gonna need two hands for this. First thing, so I'm taking off these brakes. You can see there's sort of some micro cracking on the discs. I think that's probably all right, but the, the more of the issue is the fact that there's basically no pad left. Of course, if you're changing the pads, just the caliper needs to come off. If you're changing the disc, then you've got, you've got some additional bolts, one up here and one down here somewhere. There, there it is, there it is. And as you take it out, the pads will shoot off the, the holder. If you don't take those out. Like that. You can see they're kind of worn unevenly, but, and they are kind of ready to replace. It's not too bad in terms of the uneven wear. I've seen worse. And the other one's the same, uneven wear, not too bad, time to replace. I know that's the wrong way around, but it's a useful holder for the disc. This is just to wash off the agents and stuff. Placed on at the factory. Okay, the next stage is to push, push the caliper back in. Um, I'm using the old pad for that. It's got these pads. You can see the old and new here, side by side. I actually don't have any ta tips for fitting those pads in. It's a bit of a, a fiddle to get it in. But who knows, maybe someone in the comments has a, uh, has a trick. The fronts I always find a little bit easier. This, by the way, is a trick, which definitely works. Because you need about four hands to do this. So these little spring clips go in the little holes. 
but they obviously do their job in pushing out the brake pads so if you're not holding it in some way they will fall out i have done this quite recently so if you haven't done this in a while it's probably worth taking this this slider out and uh re-greasing it Okay, that's one side done. The other side is basically the same. We're onto the rear. It's similar, but with a few differences. The rear is similar. You don't have a bolt at the top though. You just got this bolt at the bottom, which you need a 10 millimeter spanner for. Uh, you might have a cover on yours if yours is a road going car. This is a little cover bolt on the rear. Here it is. Um, all it does is it just keeps crap out from getting inside the adjustment screw. And you won't be able to see inside very easily, I don't think. But it, inside there's a uh, four millimeter Allen grub screw type thing and that will adjust the piston. So putting a little bit of pressure on it and it's reverse threaded depending on how you think about these things. So I'm going anti-clockwise and it's bringing the piston back. I guess Mazda made it the other way around because when you're putting it back together again you're making the brakes a bit tighter by making it clockwise I don't know oh and sometimes if you pull it out <laughs> it takes the little grub screw thing out with it and that's that's all it is um, don't worry about it if that happens just put it back in there I'm still running the Carbotech pads um, from when I fitted it ages and ages ago and there's still loads of meat on them compared to the new pad it's actually not that different i don't think i was running these up to the right temperature i got the wrong compound these are xp 10s carbotex and they just aren't wearing down which makes me think i'm just not getting them up to temperature so i'm going to swap them out to these hawks and maybe they'll be doing more at the rear Oh, thank God that guy cutting the grass has been done. This is where you need four hands.
Yeah, okay, again, greasing the greasy bits and not greasing the frictiony bits. Not too tight, but not too loose. We're not quite done yet. Brakes are back on, um, but we haven't adjusted the handbrake, so you can see it's very loose at the moment. So we do need to put the wheel back on, take it out of gear, and we'll adjust the handbrake. So that's now tight. You can see it won't move. Uh, I'm going to then release it. I think for a road car, I think it's maybe a quarter turn, and that means it turns. But you can kind of, I think for the, for the race car, I'll probably do another quarter turn at least, so that it's properly loose. And what I'll do is I'll go in. So once I do both sides, <laughs> I'll uh, test it with the handbrake and make sure the handbrake just about holds it. On a road car, you'll want the handbrake to hold it a bit more than just about. So I noticed in the video that the ECU was flopping around a bit. So we're going to relocate it just to the side here. So when we put passengers in the car, they're not putting their feet on this uh, ECU as well. Nothing's ever simple. Just going to remove these brackets and fit new ones on. All right, what I'm trying to do is just hang it up out of the way of passengers' feet. Oh, I'll hang it up there. Hopefully that means it won't hit anything, but I might use a cable tie just to stabilise it from this bracket here. Let's just check I haven't messed this up. Okay, it's still got the tack. And the car still fires up. That's good. Um, no, let's do the passenger seat. We spent all this time doing that, so passenger seat next. Okay, next up, seat. Uh, I'm gonna have some big sandwich plates at the bottom and that will give it enough rigidity to survive sort of rollover accidents and things like that. That's the idea, it's just a massive washer, basically. Here is one I made earlier. And that'll go underneath the car uh, and will line up with the bolts. These things need to come out as well. The main issue we're facing is it doesn't really fit, <laughs> is budging up against this area here and it's, you basically can't get it in straight. So I'm going to try and bash some of this in a bit to give it a bit more clearance. We just need to get this seat belt in now. So it's like a massive washer basically. 
um, you can see they've done the same with the driver's seat and it will that will just not rip th through the floor because um, if you just simply bolted it even with massive washers there's a risk with the forces involved and say for rollover or something that you'll end up ripping through the floor I have talked up the bolts Ooh, maybe not there you go and the belts are on oh and these things yep they're on my eBay store um, if anyone's actually interested in these leave a comment and I'll um, make sure I do link them yeah okay well next job then Okay, next on the list is the wipers. The wipers weren't going down properly when we were at Brown's Hatch. So it's definitely something I want to do now. This motor actually came with the car because the UNOS and the UK spec wiper seems to have different mounting points, bizarrely. There you go, so you can do that. And then that's how I was getting it. Like that. <laughs> that's not, <laughs> that's not a solution, is it? So there's the contact rings here. Clean these contacts off a bit maybe and just put it back in. Back in again. There's a, also, there's a, there's a hole in this. Is that supposed to be there? It does actually seem to be quite consistent. It does return somewhere. If I run the motor so that it's in its rest position. That says that's the rest position. Make sure this linkage is in the rest position. Shall we see if that fixes it? Yeah. So I think all that rigmarole of actually taking the motor off was actually a complete waste of time. It just needed to be <laughs> properly attached on the linkage, I think. Oh, well, that was easy. Could have done that out of the track. Next on the list is the left indicator, which bizarrely doesn't work. I'll show you what that means here. If I put the hazards on. Obviously you've got no front indicators and you have the, the right one flashing away and the left one is not flashing away. Right at the bottom of the list, but yeah, on track days and stuff it can be useful. It's quite difficult to film tracing electrical issues, uh, so I've got a time lapse here. Uh, it turned out to be an issue of my own making, it's when I thinned out the wiring loom I actually cut one too many wires, um, as past Will will now explain. And you can hear the hazard has changed cadence, which means they're both working. It turns out I was overzealous and had to cut the wire. So this was a error all of my own making. The only issue, I've just wired up the rear light basically directly to the flasher, which means that it's not actually displaying on the dash. But So for example, you can hear it, but you won't be able to see in any indicator, whereas the right one is working. Um, I probably could sort that out. I'm not gonna sort that out. I am gonna call that job done. Well, job half done. But it's definitely worth crossing it out.
One of the last things left to do on the list is the rust repair, and that's because it's not something I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to be doing the welding. Probably does need to be done. You can see actually the inner sill is all right, but overall underneath here it's it's not great, especially given it's there's holes quite close to the mounting point for the subframe. Given the extent of the rust, it's uh, it's probably a good idea to do it. Given the accident that it had, it's actually in surprisingly good shape. So I'm thinking about just replacing the connecting bits and maybe I can keep it as a spare. I've got a new one, obviously, as you've seen, but I might as well. And if you've been watching this far, thank you very much. And if you've liked it, please click the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, please consider doing so. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Anyway, that is the last minor job I've had to do here. All the little jobs are done. So this car, even all the minor jobs are done now. So thank you to everyone who helped get all the major jobs done. But that is it for this time. And I uh, hope to see you again next time. Thanks for watching. God, this is a noisy bird. <laughs>